Tesla's in a great position from a product perspective and a cost perspective to really um, you know, take share in, in the market. Out of all Tesla stock analysts, Colin ranks the highest among Wall Street analysts. He was just on TV to share his latest Tesla stock thoughts as well as his thoughts about the EV industry. So let's take a look. Has Tesla won the EV charging wars? I, I don't know if there's an EV charging war. What they're trying to do is facilitate EV adoption. And a couple things are happening with this is one, you're getting a standardization on plugs. It's just going to simplify you know, manufacturing for those connectors across the industry. We think that's a, a net positive and a savings for, for everyone across the industry. Secondly, we don't need a, you know, a, a million networks of, of charging. And so Tesla's already built out a fairly effective fast charging network, but that's not necessarily going to be the, the bulk of how charging happens. Most of the charging actually happens at home or at work uh, where most of these cars sit idle and, and it's really a top-up market and so you've got some fast charging that'll happen but the bulk of the charging actually happens with level one and level two chargers and so you know the, the stock that, that we cover charge point is sold off today and we think that's going to ultimately be a net winner and it's a buying opportunity right here on some confusion around how the usage patterns are really changing for vehicles as we move towards EVs. I think there's a bit of a war going between charging companies and Tesla I believe is definitely winning that war. It doesn't mean that all of these charging companies will definitely go bankrupt. There can certainly be some exceptions, but overall, I am really struggling how this would be a positive thing for other charging companies. Because Tesla makes superchargers at a much lower cost than everyone else. And perhaps the most important thing is Tesla superchargers actually work more than 99% of the time. A study here, for example, found that a quarter of charging stations that were not Tesla charging stations were non-functional. I want to point to a conversation we had with ChargePoint CEO Pascali Romano earlier in the week when he asked him specifically about the Tesla Ford partnership. Take a listen to what he had to say. We don't want our customers to have to assign a particular, our business customers, to have to assign a particular parking space to a connector type. Because you'll never get that mix right and that mix will change over time. You want to make sure that any car can park in any parking space and use the charger because that's just what's simple for consumers. And that's just what consumers want. Um, so we're looking to innovate there to make sure that we can adequately support both standards and potentially even go beyond the consumer having to carry that adapter in their car. So that came on Monday, sort of already hinting at the, that they are looking at the NACS uh, offering as well. When you look at how ChargePoint has moved down more than 10 percent, is it a little overdone, number one? And is there a bit of a misunderstanding here? I mean, could ChargePoint also be a big winner on the back of this? I think uh, both of the answers, uh, or the answer to both those questions is yes. You know, it's certainly this is overdone. I think folks misunderstand what, what's actually at stake here. Charging uh, in the EV world is really an amenity, uh, particularly in public charging. It's, it's not uh, necessarily where most of the charging happens. And so when you look at, you know, retailers or multifamily homes, the, the, the charging actually is, a, is an add-on, you know, it's cheaper than a cup of coffee for folks at work um, and you're providing coffee for your employees. You know, it's, it's one of the cheapest forms of advertising and marketing for uh, you know, retailers. And, and so for us, I don't see there being a, a slowdown in terms of charging infrastructure that gets built out. And ChargePoint is really well positioned with the, the back end software. They're really the only company that has fully integrated software with their chargers and uh, the accounting systems and operating systems in the, in the market for their customers. And so for me, I think it's a huge opportunity for them as as you start to look at standardization, the, the companies that can actually provide the full suite of, um, of solutions across their platform are really going to benefit from this. And Tesla's really only concerned with, with uh, facilitating an adoption. And so they're not going to go after charging as a, as a key market uh, for the company. It's really part of uh, their strategy around enabling EVs and, and helping drive the cost of EVs lower. Um, and so I think ChargePoint ends up being the specialist in this space that that really ultimately wins um, you know, a lot of market share and a lot of value capture over time. If Tesla makes it really easy for anyone to purchase Tesla superchargers and install them anywhere people want to install them, that would be great. But until Tesla allows it, there is an opportunity for businesses to buy chargers and install them at their locations for customers to charge while they are shopping or buying services from their business, which should perhaps attract more customers. This is ChargePoint, the company that Colin is talking about. And if I zoom in, you will see that there are quite a few chargers. None of them really are going to be as good as Tesla superchargers, but there were quite a few of them. If you look at Tesla chargers specifically, you can see how many we have here. If I remove destination chargers and 
only show superchargers. Yeah, we do have quite a few locations, but you won't find a supercharger at every Walmart, for example. At least not yet. So perhaps there's something to be said about businesses trying to install chargers to attract more customers. What is the calculation for Tesla? First it was Ford, now it's GM. They aren't just doing this out of the goodness of their heart, right? I mean, there's got to be a business case here. What is it? I think this is really more coming from Ford and, and GM. Um, you know, at this point, when they look at the number of variables that they have to solve to move through this technology transition, you know, providing charging and, and enabling charging for their customers is one of the key ones. That's it's actually quite expensive. Tesla has invested a um, you know an awful lot of money, billions of dollars, in building out this network, and for them, you know, they're just you know providing uh, you know providing service and, and renting out that that asset and so for them it's you know it has been you know part of a, a customer service offering that they recently started charging new customers for you know initially it was a, a free free service for for customers and now they're starting to charge some of their competitors for it and so it's a it's a profit pool for the, the company on some sunk cost so for tesla it's i think it's just um you know monetizing an asset that they have and for these other oems it's a realization that they can simplify their lives and really focus on some of the challenges that they have ahead in terms of moving through the transition towards building evs which is actually much more difficult than I think most of these OEMs ever uh, really anticipated. Those automakers who will not make a deal with Tesla to be able to access Tesla's supercharger network are likely not going to stick around for a very long time. They will either cave in and capitulate and make a deal with Tesla or likely make a lot less sales and potentially eventually go out of business completely. Colin, how much revenue, how much more revenue do you think Tesla is going to generate as a result of these partnerships here with GM and Ford? And to that point, now they are have partnerships with their superchargers. There has been some talk from Musk just about licensing their uh, self-driving technology. Is that a move that you think makes sense? What we've seen the company do in the in the past is really um, offer up some of the the you know non-cutting edge technology for for competition, whether it's battery technology or otherwise. And so I think it it helps some of those competitors move through some of the early stages of commercialization, but it really doesn't change uh, Tesla's technology lead to, to you know, a real material extent. And actually, there is one more way how this helps Tesla sell more Teslas. Right now, there are just about as many Tesla EVs sold as non-Tesla EVs sold in the US, although it depends on which numbers and whose numbers you look at. One of the last times I used a supercharger, I had to take a detour of about... 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes total. And I didn't really mind it too much, but I can see how many people will not be, you know, too happy about it because on my way to the supercharger, I must have passed at least five gas stations. And because we will have more non-Tesla EVs in the US than Tesla EVs eventually, Tesla will have to build out more superchargers, which means they will be on every single corner. So instead of me having to take a detour of about 10 to 15 minutes, I would only take a detour of about maybe two minutes or one minute or no detour at all. And then instead of me saying, well, overall charging is better than owning a gasoline vehicle unless you go on a road trip every single day, it's still a little bit inconvenient some of the time. I will then say, <laughs> owning an electric car is just so much more better in every single way imaginable. You don't even need to take any detours at all when you take road trips or go on longer drives. And that, I think, will help sell more Teslas. Some, of course, will still not be happy that supercharging a vehicle takes more time than fueling a vehicle with gas. But at least to me personally, what's a lot more annoying is taking a detour. When I take a detour, I feel like, why am I doing this? But if it just takes longer to charge at a supercharger compared to fueling your vehicle, while it is still a little bit annoying some of the time. It's nowhere near as annoying to me personally as having to take a detour because if I'm just taking a little bit longer to charge at a supercharger, I can still read my email, I can make a phone call and go for a contract, let's say, if I'm working on something with my lawyers or accountants, I can do something useful. But if I'm just taking a detour, there's nothing I can do pretty much. From a revenue standpoint, you know, we don't have uh, much detail on what the what's going to, you know, really um, these deals will amount to. At the end of the day, the real driver for Tesla right now is is, is selling cars and then uh, upselling services and, and features on those vehicles uh, over time. And and that's the real thrust here for us is that it's going to enable more adoption of, of EVs and Tesla's in a great position from a product perspective and a cost perspective to really um, you know take share in, in the market. And as we see 
some of the supply chain simplify, it makes things easier for them as the largest buyer of um, a lot of these components to continue driving costs down and continue to maintain their advantage versus peers. While the supercharging business is not going to be a huge business for Tesla, it will have a material impact on Tesla stock. And we already saw proof of that when GM and Ford made a deal with Tesla, Tesla stock in both of these cases jumped higher, but I would have an extremely difficult time trying to imagine how the supercharging business alone could, let's say, 5x Tesla stock. I just don't see it. But how it could make Tesla stock go up maybe 10, 20, 50, 60 more dollars, maybe even 100 more dollars. Yeah, I think that's certainly possible. What does this ultimately mean for Tesla's competitors in the EV space, whether that is somebody like a Rivian or somebody like Volkswagen that is not using NACS right now? Are they going to be forced to change as well? It's a little unclear, you know, that the electrical industry has not provided a standard yet for the industry. Is a little curious. That sort of thing typically happens early on in a, in a new market. And, it, you know, it's, it's taken, uh, in a, you know, the standard setters longer than we would have anticipated to come to a conclusion on that. Um, for, for some of these other folks, it's just a, it's an adapter that they need to, to put on their or their, their customers are going to have to use. So it's, you know, a nominal cost. It's not a big deal, but it is a level of convenience per uh, Pasquale's uh, comments earlier that, you know, consumers would like to make this easier. And, and they certainly, uh, you know, folks are trying to work in that uh, in that direction. But I don't think it's a, a real meaningful change for any of the com competition, um, you know, as we move towards standards. What does this mean to Tesla competitors? So I'll simply either make a deal with Tesla or you make less EV sales. Which one do you want? I believe over the next little while, we will see a lot more companies trying to make a deal with Tesla. Here's a list of all the companies that use Tesla adapters. And you can see that at first, not many companies at all. Just look at the dates here. And then Ford makes a deal here. And then look one after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. This will continue. For making the deal was really the big catalyst here. And likely each time a bigger automaker makes a deal with Tesla, Tesla stock will jump a little bit again. For example, if Honda made a deal with Tesla or Kia or Hyundai or Volkswagen or Mercedes or BMW. Although I think the market to a certain extent expects a lot of these deals to be made in the near future, so some of that upside is probably already priced in. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, but if you haven't seen this one in which I talk about why Tesla board members are now buying more Tesla stock, and sometimes actually they sell Tesla stock, and it looks like they sell a lot, but really you need to watch this video to understand what's going on. Watch this if you haven't yet. My name is Matt Postis. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.